Hey guys, it's Kevin here this morning. I uh, woke up at 5 in the morning to feed my dogs, but didn't actually make it to the gym today. So I'm going to go ahead and film while I go to work. Um, probably end up doing it tomorrow, uh, going to the gym, but kind of threw a lot of my week off. And so just trying to play catch up at this point. But... If you remember last week I went to the orthodontist I got my braces and then I went out of town and uh, also yesterday was the first day that my wife uh, left her job and doesn't work a job anymore and uh, she actually got a lot of cool stuff done now that she doesn't have to go to work but uh, still working on growing our business and everything we had like a really rough start and uh, I guess that's just what happens. Um, we lost like one client when she left. And then um, we're trying to work on getting more, of course, and we're starting our marketing system today. So hopefully that gets us some clients. Um, I'm usually very pessimistic about projections and things. I usually predict about like a percent of a percent success rate with a lot of the things that we do and so right now I'm focused more on like the volume game trying to reach a lot of businesses and a lot of people to basically promote the product um, and I'm just assuming almost nobody will actually do it um, and I think that's a very fair assumption you know there's a lot of businesses out there or startups that have way too unrealistic projections like they think they're gonna close a few deals a week right at the beginning and some businesses can and it's possible but like what I've found is it's more likely that you won't do that <laughs> like the uh, the odds of people actually signing up for things is quite low actually um, unless you have a really well established brand which you know we're gonna work towards doing that right now we're still pretty early on to everything but now that my wife doesn't work her full-time job, we have somebody dedicated to just making the product better and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Uh, before, we were just kind of doing things, and we had no way of analyzing or following up on anything just because we were both working. And I think now we're going to be doing even better. I don't know. And if something doesn't come out of this, which I find it hard to believe, something else will come of it. And so I'm not too concerned um, between all the stuff that we do, something will happen. Now, I will say like this week, like I was saying in the beginning, it's kind of been thrown off a lot. Um, I think a lot of it just has to do with like going out of town. When you go out of town, you kind of lose your entire schedule or your entire routine. You know, we were only gone for Saturday and then we came back on Sunday. But I think when we came back, all we did was just sleep and clean the house. And it takes a long time to clean the house. I think this was probably one of the worst weekends we could have left town. Um, just because a lot of changes were happening at once. Um, we had, you know, obviously my wife leaving her job. We had to transfer a lot of things over to my name and figure out a lot of the financial stuff. Figure out a lot of things with the business. A big reason we went... But even though we probably shouldn't have, is uh, it's some personal reasons, and I can't really get into too much. But you know, the long story short is like a lot of my wife's family, they kind of just work their jobs and they don't really have anything else to do after work. Whereas like we're trying to start a business, so it's like the complete opposite. We have like way too much to do and no time to do it. And uh, I would personally work really long hours so you know the only time I have to get anything done is like Thursday night when I get home from work and then Friday Saturday Sunday and you know Friday we're just out celebrating that uh, it was her last day of work and then Saturday we're out so Sunday was the only day I had left to like really clean or do anything and we had a huge list of things to do it wasn't just cleaning the house it was setting up all the bills to be transferred over all the things that we have to do to grow the business and you know what it's like I think at the time it feels worse than it is like when you just have a long list of things to do and like no time to do it 
it just sucks. But then you look back at it and you're usually going to be I'm well ahead of everyone because I have a list at all and I have a system of doing things. And so, you know, we always say like one day we'll look back at this and we'll kind of just laugh at it or we'll, we'll just be glad that we've made it. It won't really matter, you know, all the times that uh, it sucked. And I think that's true, but I think at the moment it really does suck and it's all you can think about and it's all you really like obsess over. And so, you know, I think for anyone starting a business or about to start their journey, it's important to keep that in mind. Like in the moment, it's going to suck a lot more than when you look back at it and when you succeed. But uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it, it's a lot to do, um, a lot of work. And it definitely sucks when you're working like a full-time job trying to do everything at the same time. But that's kind of the way it goes. But luckily, one of us is out, so we have somebody to do some stuff. But, um, yeah, I think it'll eventually work out. It might not work out as quickly as we would like. I don't think anything really ever does in life. And, of course, you know, right when we're about to make this major transition, we lose a client and things go wrong and things or the world tries to convince you, like, maybe I should go back to my job where it's safe and... You know, things don't happen. But at the same time, you got to understand, depending on your personality, what you want, you need to understand that this is the best decision long term. For me, too, like I've been dwelling on this a lot where I have a lot of friends who are starting to buy dental offices or just recently bought dental offices and they're doing pretty well. You know, they're growing. They're usually buying a dental office that's doing 700 to 800,000 and collections and that's not what they take home that's just like the net revenue but um you know usually with the net revenue like that they take home about 40 percent if they're working in the office right so that would be probably about three hundred thousand like a year which is pretty good you know and uh you know they're growing it a little bit more they're growing it to like over a million in collections so obviously that would increase their take home to like maybe four or five hundred thousand, which is really good money, you know. It's like definitely not pocket change by any means. But uh, kind of for me and what I think while I'm doing all this is that, you know, I could go and buy a dental office, but then it's a lot of headache. You know, you have to worry about a lot of staff and patients and a lot of problems. I think I've mentioned plenty in all my previous videos and it's it's impossible to tell if it'll grow that quickly sometimes it does take about a year or two for you to actually get to that that point um so let's say like let's be conservative let's say it takes about two years to hit that point you know and i'm just thinking like short term if i were to go buy a demo office grow it i could make about a few hundred thousand half a million a year and then you know, I would just end up selling it probably as soon as it gets to that point. Um, and then I'd have to deal with all those problems along the way. Whereas like long term, if we look at, you know, what it is that we want to do, we want to buy businesses that aren't necessarily dental specific, but very easy to scale and very easy to replicate um, and delegate out a lot of the work. You know, if we were to do that now, we could easily continue doing it forever. And let's say like you know maybe in two years time we don't make nearly as much as a dental office you know we only make like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand like three hundred thousand but you know then year four and five you you kind of exponentially grow right like it'll keep picking up and up and up and it'll just keep going up because you can scale it you can you know continue to replicate it whereas dental offices you can continue to buy more but you have to hire associates and they take 30 percent of the collections so really, like, you you need to buy four offices to make the same as working in one. Um, and so, yeah, in theory, at least. And so it's not as, like, black and white as it seems. Uh, whereas, like, different businesses, right, like, their profit margin might be 10, 20 percent. But the thing is, like, you can easily acquire more and more of them. It doesn't take your time nearly as much as a dental office. Like, your dental office, you're collecting 40 percent, but you're working in it. So you got to account for like the value of your time too, right? Because like I said, let's say you own two dental offices, but you have associates working in them. You're making 10% margins on them. 
because you're paying your associates 30%, right? And so your 40% goes down to 10. Um, and so, you know, I, I just know the long-term answer is to not buy a dental office and to go into other businesses because they're easily, more easily scalable versus dentistry. It takes a long time to buy dental offices. It takes a long time to turn the staff around, implement your systems, patients still leave. Um, there's different models that I just find a lot more attractive because you have a lot more control over things. But, you know, not to say dentistry is bad. Dentistry is a pretty good business model, but it it won't get you to the next level. It's still very, um, what they call a solopreneur business where it's like, you're really just an individual running your own business. It's not a true business um, because everything's reliant on you for the most part. But yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of what I've been thinking about lately because it kind of sucks when, you know, I know I could own a dental office and make pretty good money, like more money than I'm making now. And I'm not making bad money right now by any means. I'm making pretty decent money for a, an associate like definitely on the high end for what I'm what I'm doing or how much work I'm doing. But at the same time I get kind of bored where I'm just like man, I could just buy an office and be busier and probably take home more money. But at the end of the day it also doesn't fit with my goals. I think if you guys have been watching for a while, you guys know that like my goal is to grow businesses that don't require me to be there after I figure out the automation and the systems. And dentistry just unfortunately it's doable, but it's just not that predictable. Um, it's a lot harder to do, especially when you're relying on dentists and you're paying them a lot of money for potentially questionable work, you know, whereas like most other businesses, you're paying somebody, maybe they do questionable work, maybe not, but you're not paying a, a dentist salary, you know, and it's, uh, it's just like over time that will get to you, that will eat your margins and your bottom line. And then you still have to honor a lot of like the work. Like let's say someone, you pay them a good 30% and they do bad work and they leave and patients have problems. Like somebody else, usually the next associate's gonna have to redo all that work. And usually you're gonna redo it for free. You're not gonna recharge them for someone else's work. But there's also like dental insurance. Um, there's like an insurance on top of insurance that will pay for redo work and all that stuff. So that's, a, that's always a good option to, to do, but yeah, I mean, we'll see how things go. Maybe one day we'll end up owning dental offices again and uh, changing the system. I think just right now, though, it's like, it's not a good time for anything. Um, obviously, that shouldn't dissuade you from doing anything, but it's just a lot of risk to be putting a lot of money into dentistry. But any business in general right now is kind of hurting. Most of them are doing pretty badly. So, and the economy in general is just doing really badly right now. So, sometimes it's better just to sit tight a little bit, kind of see how things play, and find the right opportunities that kind of align with your goals and your philosophy. Sometimes it's better just to not rush things. And uh, sometimes in life, things just kind of work out for a reason, I've found. I know, like, throughout most of my life, things usually work out the first time they uh, nothing really ever goes wrong but for some reason buying a dental office has been like the most difficult thing for me to do and it's not a lack of information it's not a lack of like money either it's just like finding an actual reasonable deal <laughs> is like impossible for me for some reason and uh yeah maybe it's just like I just have a higher standard where like I expect something that a dental office cannot get me and maybe I'm just lucky that it didn't work out that you know I will eventually find another business model that fits my goals and what it is that I want because yeah to find a dental office that really fits what it is that I want um, it's usually a scam or it's there's usually some problems with it now I'm about to run out of time on this video so I'm gonna cut this one out I'll start another one